So this is the basic setup I use for when I um, cast up tiles. I only have two Herstarts molds that I use, the Cracked Earth Floor Tile, which is mold number 203, and the Fieldstone Wall Mold, which is mold number 701. And I just set things out on the lid of a plastic container to catch the excess plaster from spilling. Uh, I use art plaster, which can be bought at Michael's. This uh, five pound box, 2.27 kilograms, is good for, uh, I would say, between uh, 60 and 70 molds, if I was to estimate. Uh, it costs about $12, 11 something, at Michael's. But of course, you don't want to buy anything at Michael's without using a coupon, so they they offer 40% uh, coupons that you can use at least once a week. So um, when I bought this, uh, it was you know 11 something with about a four four dollar and fifty cent uh, discount uh, because of the coupon. So uh, that's basically what it runs, and I've been using this uh, with with pretty good success. It's um, not. Probably the, the you know the cheapest option or the hardest plaster you can use. Uh, I've seen other videos that show uh, dental plaster and and other other types, um, uh, lightweight hydrocal and what have you. But this I can get basically at any time. A quick run to Michaels and um, it's been good so far. No no real complaints. The ratio for this plaster is also an advantage I like. There's, it's not a lot of complicated math. Um, the, the ratio basically runs a half cup of plaster to a quarter cup of water. And I just use these two plastic cups. I've been using them since I started. Plastic spoon and, and I'm, I'm good to go. I use these uh, measuring cups. They're sort of like scoops so I can get down inside the, the box of plaster and, and scoop out my half cup and pour myself up a half cup of water. and use these cups just to, just to uh, keep the, the mess down or keep my measuring cups from getting, getting too dirty. I also use a plastic squeegee for skimming the top of the molds off when I'm, uh, when I'm finished pouring and that will help um, of course make the bottoms of the tiles when they're set uh, nice and flat for, for gluing. And then I just have some paper towel for cleaning up. So it doesn't really take that long at all. I just take my half cup of plaster, pour it into the water, and then with a plastic spoon begin to stir it up, break it up. And this process takes usually about 30 seconds. I just want to make sure everything is dissolved or, or uh, broken down. There aren't any clumps left. Get everything in a nice solution, nice and even. This ratio won't fill both molds entirely, and that's on purpose because I am mainly interested in the floor tiles and not in the smaller pieces that, that you can see on the mold there. Uh, so I fill my floor tile mold first, then I move on to the, the cracked earth uh, walls, or pardon me, the, the fieldstone walls, and I fill up the larger pieces on those molds first as well because I'm most interested in, in the large chunks. and. Um, that way I'm saving plaster and I'm getting the most out of the molds for what I'm interested in. I just have a little clump of plaster on the spoon there that I'm going to try and work off. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to get ready and pour and I do it fairly fairly quickly but fairly controlled. I don't want to waste a lot of plaster so I'll just go ahead and fill up each pocket of the floor tile. And as I move along that way the wastage is minimized. So there's ten of these that I want to try and get and then I move on to the larger wall sections and pour those up. I'm seeing now there's a couple of chunks in my plaster this time. Not a problem really, but maybe I didn't use quite as much water as I ordinarily do. 
And then if I get a piece that's um, not quite full by the time I'm finished pouring, then that piece can be used as a, as a rubble piece or an accent piece somewhere else. So there, that's that pour. And then I take my squeegee and I will skim off the top. I give it a couple of quick scrapes. And then because we sometimes will get air bubbles, I'll take a minute to just jostle the molds. Which will cause air bubbles to uh, break free from the bottom of the mold and make their way out of the plaster. The set time is between a half an hour and 45 minutes for this kind of plaster. And to speed things along, I plug in a fan and uh, just let that run. And I'll be back in about a half an hour to see how these are doing. Okay, so it's been about a half an hour now, uh, and these tiles are ready to uh, come out of the molds. And the tiles are still quite damp. They'll spend a couple days drying. I've got this um, this paper tray that I use um, to, to set my tiles out on while they dry. And the tiles just simply pop out of the molds, and they've got that nice texture to them. They make great dungeon tiles. I just set them out and uh, do a little bit of cleanup before I before I set up set up for the next pour. And the dry plaster will just flake right off. Take a minute or two just to scrape the excess plaster off. You can do this on the tray or over a garbage can. It uh, takes a couple of minutes. You don't want uh, loose little bits of plaster down inside the uh, the mold cups. So yeah, I, I take a couple of minutes just to clean those off, and I'll I'll do that afterwards. These longer wall tiles or wall pieces are a little more delicate, so when they're first coming out of the molds, just take a take some care to not fracture them, but once they're set, they're pretty sturdy. There, I just cracked the, uh, the little piece of rubble that I was going to use. This one is just a partial pour and I can just use it as a piece of rubble or something. And again, I don't know if I'll wind up using that or not, maybe. Those are possibles and then I usually do this over a trash can, and I'll I'll take the molds and uh, give them like a little smack like that, and the uh, take a couple minutes to um, make sure all the dried plaster is off them before I pour up again, and then this stuff just breaks right off, and it's, it makes for a fairly easy cleanup. I'll just discard that and. Um, prep things and get ready for the next pour. I base my miniatures on foam board and uh, for this video I'm going to be making some 3x3 three three standard four tiles. So I've gone ahead with a light colored pencil and uh, drawn out um, a set of lines on the foam board and I just take a box cutter and, um, and cut along the line I made. This foam board's got paper on each side with uh, foam in the middle. So I just make a cut down through the foam. I don't necessarily have to make it all the way through because it's a bit stiff. And then I can take it and crease it like that. And then take the box cutter and uh, trim, trim down the length, cutting through the second set of paper. I don't have to be 100% straight since I'll be trimming off excess after I place the tiles on the foam board. Anyway, so uh, let's see if I can just do this freehand. I might have to use the ruler. I 
Okay, so I'll make up a batch of those and then uh, get ready to glue my tiles down. So I've gone ahead and now and cut out pieces of the foam board for gluing the tiles and I've got a stack of three inch by three inch pieces and a few that are uh, three and a half by three and a half and then a piece that's three and a half by four inches. I've also got a few irregular shaped pieces and a, a larger piece. These will allow me to make corners and, and uh, I think I have a, an entranceway planned for this piece. I've got stacks of nine pieces of uh, floor tile here and there are uh, a dozen of those so uh, theoretically I could make a dozen three by threes. I've just got them laid out and ready to go. Um, I might not use them all for three by threes. I've got a couple of other tiles that I want to, uh, a couple different configurations I want to test out and uh, some are cut so that I could put uh, the half inch wide um, wall pieces on there. So as you might have seen in a, another video of mine, I've got this platform that I had made that uh, allows me to square up my tiles. Make sure it's in the camera there. And basically this is uh, press wood and it's got rubber feet on the bottom to make it nice and sturdy. I can uh, push on it and lean on it and it's not going to slide on the table. And Basically it lets me to place a tile like that and then grab a stack of nine floor tiles and I'm using Aline's Tacky Glue. And basically I just put a dab of glue on the bottom of each tile as soon as the glue starts running. So if you want to, you can arrange these cracked earth floor tiles to so that the cracks sort of line up and you can make interesting patterns in the floor that way. But it's not necessary and I just put that little bit of weight on there. And there's your basic floor tile. And from there you can make any kind of configuration. I think I'm going to make uh, an entranceway. These three and a half by three foot pieces are going to allow me to uh, put corner walls in so I can just without, without applying the glue I can another stack of tiles here. And then let's see with another piece like that. I'll need a longer piece like so. There's a corner and uh, any kind of configuration you like. Um, the 3x3 three three seems to be the most versatile just for making up a room, but hallways, um, L-shaped pieces, um, you can use this. The, uh, the, cut, the cut out surface on here is uh, 8 inches square, so you can use that to, uh, to make a piece as, as big as eight, 8 inches by 8 inches. Um, just for durability, I don't think I'd, I'd make a piece that was that big, but I just wanted the, uh, the size to be uh, easy to work with. The next step then would be to prime these up. I'm going to uh, do some gluing now and prime them up, play around with a couple different configurations, and the next step is um, priming and dry brushing. Okay, so this is what I finished up with, with the current batch of tiles that I had cast. Um, I've got a number of 3x3s and a few 3x3s uh, three that have walls on them. I mix up the walls just a little bit. Um, I had previously had been making just the single tier of uh, the fieldstone uh, for walls, but I, I bumped it up to two because I think it makes for a better looking room. And I've mixed it up just a little, putting a couple pieces of um, half cast or rubble pieces and um, a couple gaps to made it look like there's perhaps uh, a drain or culvert um, in the flooring or along the wall and um, a larger piece that's that's a five by three with walls and a couple pieces of rubble there 
some smaller pieces that can be thrown in to make uh, corners or or bits of uh, entranceways transition between rooms. I have this piece that uh, is part of a pedestal that Ben from Ben's RPG Pile sent me. I put it on a, on a single uh, tile and what I expect I'll do there is uh, take an old miniature and um, glue it to the top and then um, prime it and paint it to make it look like a statue. I think that'll turn out pretty cool. Uh, again following uh, roughly some of the information that that Ben um, had about his jail that he had built. Uh, of course he's got uh, a lot more going on there than, than I have at this stage, but I followed a couple of the recommendations he made there in uh, making an entrance for myself, and I used this um, steel mesh that I had lying around from a from a while ago, and um, cut a piece. I actually uh, stuck the ends into the foam core to make it sort of uh, more stable, and then just built the piece around it. And it's just using different lengths of field stone wall and some of the floor tile. And that will make, uh, when painted up, um, a nice entrance way to a dungeon or a transition. And uh, so yeah, the next stage is for me to prime these and get to the dry brushing. And that'll be in the second part of the video. Thanks and we'll see you soon.